Let's continue with the topic on Methods to Achieve Precision in AutoCAD. In this tutorial, you will learn from point and point filters options in the OSNAP menu. You will also learn the concepts of object snap tracking, ray and X line. Let's start with the from point option. I'll draw a line from this point through a distance of 100 units. I'll type 100 and I'll zoom in. Now I want to draw another line exactly from the endpoint of this line. How do I do it? Give enter to repeat the line command and I'll give at the rate. At the rate stands for the last point. Since AutoCAD memorizes the last point, I can access that point by simply inputting at the rate at the from point prompt. And I have started a line from this endpoint. Suppose if I want to draw another line exactly at a distance of 25 units leftward from this endpoint. How do I do it? I'll repeat the line command. I'll give at the rate. 25 less than less than stands for the angle 180 degrees and I've started such a line I have used polar coordinates to define it I have used polar coordinate entry method and you're already familiar with this now this endpoint is the last point and based on this point I can plot any other point in any direction by starting with at the rate sign suppose if you want to start a line exactly from this endpoint at a distance of 30 units rightward that means I want to make this endpoint as the reference point in such a context, you can use from point option. Let's see that. I'll give line command and I'll shift right click to access the OSNAP menu and I'll click on from point option. When you use from point, it'll ask you for a base point, which is nothing but a reference point. So I'll use this endpoint as a reference point. Now it is asking for the offset, which is the distance from the base point. And that distance can be defined either by using relative or polar coordinate entry methods. So I'll give at the rate 30 less than 0 because I want to move 30 units in the rightward direction in polar coordinate method just give an enter now I have started a line exactly from this point hence from point can be used to make any existing point on the screen a base point or a reference point based on which you can plot another point at a specific distance using relative or polar coordinates you can also input distance in absolute values let me show you an example I'll draw a line from this point and I'll turn the ortho mode on and I'll give a length of 120 units. Next I want to draw a line at a distance of 45 units from this end point and I want to give the distance in absolute values. Before drawing the line you can bring the origin to this particular point. For that I'll just click on this icon. It is called world coordinate system icon. It is the default coordinate setup. Just click on the origin point and turn the ortho mode off. And I'll bring the origin to this particular endpoint. Just click there. And I can give the values in absolute coordinates. So just click on line. When I'm asked to give the first point, I'll give 45,0. Hence, I have started a line from the required location. You can also align the coordinate setup on an inclined plane. For example, I'll draw a line from this endpoint to this endpoint. It's an inclined line. Now I would like to draw a circle at a distance of 25 units from this endpoint along this line in that case i'll click on the uses icon and bring the origin to this point click on the x-axis and click on this end point to align the coordinate setup with this inclined line i'll select circle command center radius option when i'm asked to specify the center point i'll give 25,0 this circle is at a distance of 25 units from this end point hence you have created a coordinate setup to suit your requirement such a coordinate setup is called user coordinate system or UCS. Next we will see mid between two points option in the OSNAP menu. I'll draw a rectangle using the rectangle command and I'll take a copy of it using the copy command. I'll select the object and specify the base point and the second point. Suppose I want to construct a circle exactly at the midpoint of the line connecting these two endpoints. In this case you can use the mid between two points option. When I'm asked to specify the center point of the circle I'll choose mid between points and this endpoint as the first point of mid and this endpoint as the second point of mid. Hence I have defined the center of the circle. Next we will see the concept of point filters in the OSNAP menu. First of all I'll define point filters. Point filter in AutoCAD is defined as a method to define a point by extracting x, y and z coordinates from existing points. I'll demonstrate it with an example. I'm going to create a rectangle using the line command. I'll click on line. I'll pick my first point here and my ortho mode is on. 
second point, third point and this is the fourth point. But if I simply make a pick to define the fourth point, it won't be accurate. You can make use of point filters in such a context. I'll turn the ortho off. You know that x coordinate of this point will be the same as x coordinate of end of this point. Similarly, y coordinate of this point will be the same as y coordinate of end of this. You can communicate this information to the software using point filters. So I'll shift right click and go to point filters and I'll select dot x. Dot x stands for x coordinate of. Now it's waiting for a point input. I'll choose this endpoint. Now the x coordinate is extracted from that endpoint. Next it is asking for y and z coordinates. Again I'll shift right click, go to point filters and I'll choose dot y off means y coordinate of this endpoint. x and y is defined. Now it is asking for z because line is a three dimensional object. In point filters the last coordinate can be defined by inputting a numeric value. For z I'll give 0 because I'm working on the xy plane. So this point is precisely defined. I'll click on close to complete the rectangle. Next I would like to construct a circle right at the geometrical center of this rectangle. So I'll click on circle command, choose center radius method. In order to define the center point, conventionally you construct two diagonals and find out the point of intersection. But if you know point filters, you don't have to do that. Instead, I'll shift right click and I'll go to point filters. I'll choose dot x. Dot x means x coordinate of. It is waiting for a point input. You can pick mid of this line or mid of this edge. Because you know that x coordinate of mid of this line or mid of this line will be the same as x coordinate of the geometric center of the rectangle. Because these three points are lying along the same vertical line. Similarly, I'll shift right click, go to point filters, dot y off means y coordinate of mid of this edge or mid of this edge I can pick. So I'll click on this mid. Now it is asking for a z, which is 0 because it's on the xy plane. The moment you specify z coordinate, that point is defined. Now you can just click to define the radius. This is how you make use of point filters, which is very useful in two dimension as well as in three dimension. Next, we will move on to object snap tracking. It can be used as a replacement for point filters. You can see object snap tracking button very close to osnap button and can be controlled using F11 function key. When you press F11, it will get activated. And when you press F11 again, it will get disabled. I'll illustrate it by constructing a symbol rectangle. I'll draw a line and I'll start from this point and I'll keep the ortho mode on. Next one, I'll click here and next point on top. In order to pick the next point, I'm going to make use of the object snap tracking. Now I'll disable the ortho mode and I'm going to take the cursor onto this end point and I'll move the cursor away from that point. Now you can see a green tick mark at this point which means that I have tracked that point. To remove the tracking, you can take the cursor back to the end point which is already tracked. After tracking that point, when you move the mouse, you will see a temporary construction line which is this green dotted line. Now if you click a point, you will be clicking it anywhere on this construction line. This will help you eliminate the usage of an additional construction line as you do in manual drafting. Now I'll click a point here and I've got it exactly on that vertical tracking line. I'll undo this and I'll track this endpoint as well as this particular endpoint in the upper right corner. Now when I move the mouse leftward, I'll get the point of intersection of the two construction lines. I'll make a click to get that point and I'll click on close. It's similar to point filters and sometimes you might find it more convenient than using point filters. But point filter has more extended applications in three dimension. Next, I'll construct a circle right at the geometric center of this rectangle and I'll try it using tracking. I'll go to circle, center radius method. I'll keep the cursor at this midpoint and I've tracked that point. I'll keep the cursor on this midpoint and I've tracked that point as well. And when I move the mouse, I'll get the point of intersection and just make a click there and I'll click to specify the radius. So this is all about object snap tracking. It's easy and convenient and it will help you eliminate the usage of temporary construction lines. Now I'll introduce you to two new objects using which you can create construction lines. These objects can be taken from the draw panel. So click on the drop down in the draw panel. Here you can see ray as well as x line. Conceptually ray is similar to the one which you have learned in geometry. It starts from a point and goes towards infinity in all directions. X line can also be used as a construction line. It starts from infinity and goes towards infinity like an axis. So let's see the ray command. When I click on ray, it asks me for a start point. I've picked a start point and a through point. The through point prompt is a recurring prompt. 
means you can pick as many throw points as you want depending upon your requirement. When you pan the screen, you can't find the end point of this ray because it goes towards infinity. I'll erase this. Similarly, X lines can also be used to create temporary construction lines. Now you are asked to define a point and a through point. The same prompt sequence which you have seen in the case of ray. I'll pick a through point here and one more through point here. When you pan the screen, you can't find the end point because it's also infinite in nature. Now let's see a typical application of these objects. To try out this tutorial, you can download the drawing file of this plan using the link provided below this video. You don't have to create this plan, but all you have to do is just download and open the drawing file and try out the procedure explained. I'll click on ray. It'll ask me for a start point. I'll pick the start point here and a through point. Next start point is this and through point is this. Then I'll give an enter to repeat the ray command. Start point and through point. Again enter. Start point and through point. And I'll repeat these are all just projection lines. Now I'll create a line to indicate the ground level. So I'll click on X line command. I'll shift right click and choose nearest from the O snap menu to get a closest point. Now it'll ask you for a through point. I'll pick a point rightward. Since my ortho mode is on, the created X line will be perfectly horizontal. Now I'll copy this X line. So I'll click on copy command. Base point I'll click here. When I'm asked for the second point, I'll keep the cursor in the upward direction and I'll type 60. This X line indicates the floor level. Now I am again asked for the second point and I'll give a distance of 360 and this indicates the roof level. Now I'll give a distance of 450 at the second point prompt to indicate the parapet level. And we have different lines to indicate different levels in the elevation. Now I'll click on trim command. Trim command will let you trim a portion of an object. When I'm asked to select objects, I'll give an enter. When you're asked to select the object to trim, you can go to fence option and you can choose first, second, third and fourth points of the fence line as you see it on the screen. Because I want to trim off all the unwanted portions of the X line surrounding this rectangle. Give an enter to complete the trim command. When you trim a ray or an X line, the resulting object will be a line. When you take the cursor over here, you will get a tooltip that it's a line. We will see more details on the trim command in the coming tutorials. So that's all about the various precision tools in AutoCAD. In the next tutorial, I'll explain the variety of object selection methods that are available in AutoCAD. Before I sign off, I request all of you to subscribe to my YouTube channel SabirCAD and hit the like button of this video if you liked it. Thank you so much.